Dario and I'm Sabiha Samar. Here are today's top stories. China Xiao Group has announced plans to establish a car manufacturing facility in Fergana, Uzbekistan. This initiative follows a visit by officials and entrepreneurs from Fergana to China, where they held successful negotiations with the company's management. Huang He, head of China Xiao Group, detailed the investment plan amounting to $1.5 billion over five years. The project will be executed in multiple stages. In the first stage, with an initial investment of $50 million, large-scale assembly, painting and adjustment lines will be launched, targeting an annual production of up to 60,000 vehicles, including gas, electric and hybrid models. The second stage, estimated at $350 million, will focus on increasing the localization of component production. The third stage, with a $1.1 billion investment, aims to boost annual production to 110,000 vehicles. The Uzbek delegation also toured the BAIC Blueprint Magna automobile plant in Zhenjiang, which produces ArcFox electric vehicles and the Stiletto model. This plant, with an annual capacity of 150,000 cars, serves as a benchmark for the upcoming facility in Fargana. Kazakhstan's leading financial technology company, Caspi, is preparing to expand into international markets, including Uzbekistan. CEO Mikhail Lomtazdi shared these plans during a conversation with Miguel Armasa, co-founder of the Gligamish Ventures Investment Fund. Caspi has already achieved significant market penetration in Kazakhstan, with 15 million monthly users out of the population of 20 million. Over the past year, Caspi has been exploring opportunities for geographic expansion, focusing on markets with strong mobile communications, non-cash payment systems and developed e-commerce. Lomtazde identified Eastern Europe and Asia as key targets, with Uzbekistan being particularly attractive due to its proximity and large market potential. The company's recent initial public offering on the Nasdaq exchange raised $1 billion, highlighting its robust financial health and investor confidence. With Uzbekistan's population of over 36 million as of January 2024, the country presents significant growth opportunities for Caspi. The fintech giant's expansion into these regions aims to bolster its international presence and drive innovation. China has pledged over $2 billion loan for the construction of the China-Kyrgyzstan-Uzbekistan Railway, according to Azamat Sakaev, General Director of Kyrgyz Temir Zolu. The announcement was made during a meeting of the Committee on Transport, Communications, Architecture and Construction of the Kyrgyz Parliament. The total cost of the railway project is estimated to over $4 billion. Half of this amount will be provided by the joint project company, which includes representatives from Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan and China. China's $2 billion contribution will be given as a loan, while the remaining funds will come from investments by the involved parties. Kyrgyzstan is expected to contribute approximately $700 million. The JPC is based on an agreement between Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan and China, with China holding 51% stake in the joint venture and Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan each holding 24.5%. An agreement on the railway joint implementation was signed in Beijing on the 6th of June, with construction set to begin in August this year. Turkmenistan has decided to explore the potential implementation of 5G technology. This proposal, presented by Mamet Khan Chakiev, director of the Agency for Transport and Communications, was approved by President Serdar Berdi Mohamedov during an online government meeting. During the meeting, Chakiev highlighted Turkmenistan's progress in digitalization, showcasing the deployment of smart city and smart home systems, and enhancements in cybersecurity with Arkadak City. He also mentioned that modern technologies and innovations are planned for the Ashgabat City Mega Project, aligning with Turkmenistan's broader strategy to incorporate advanced communication technologies. The Turkmen Aragat Nashik Agency proposed the adoption of 5G technology, citing its 10 times higher data transmission capacity and a more stable and reliable connection. President Berdi Mohamedov emphasized the importance of integrating advanced digital technologies to support Turkmenistan's transition to a digital economy. He approved the proposal and asked Chekhiev to conduct a detailed examination of the potential and advantages of 5G technology. Uzbekistan will raise salaries for top qualified teachers starting September 2025, as announced by the Presidential Press Service. President Shafkat Mirziyoyev reviewed proposals aimed at improving preschool and school education, emphasizing the importance of well-trained teachers. 
the government has introduced a new certification system involving over 190,000 teachers, promoting 51,000 to higher qualification categories. To support professional growth, advanced training centers and teacher training colleges will be fully utilized with international trainers enhancing the quality of training. President Mirziyoyev emphasized the need for continuous professional development and fair assessment systems for teachers. Tajikistan has implemented stringent measures to prevent the spread of cholera from neighboring Afghanistan. The Ministry of Health and Social Protection of the Population has intensified surveillance and sanitation efforts in border areas along the Panj River and districts of Khalton province. This response follows reported cholera cases in Afghanistan's Balkh, Kundur, Takhar and Badakhshan regions. Deputy Head of the MOHSPP State Sanitary and Epidemiological Supervision Services stated that these preventive actions aim to curb cholera transmission through shared water sources. Health officials highlighted the increased risk of disease transmission during floods or when wastewater from Afghan villages flows into Tajik rivers. Residents in border areas are advised to follow strict hygiene practices including thorough hand washing and boiling water for consumption and cooking to prevent cholera and other intestinal infections. That's all for today's news. Stay tuned for more updates.